What's up? This is Yuda for BeatLab Academy and this is the third video of the tutorial series about Ableton preferences. So let's go to the preferences, live preferences. If you're on a PC, it's going to be options and all the way down here. Live preferences. We're going to talk about the link MIDI tab. Um, so first, if you have the newest version of Ableton Live, you can play in time with link. You simply open it up, turn it on. You'll see link here and anyone in your Wi-Fi network that is also linked. Um, you'll see more links here and that's it. You're synchronized also uh, available for selected iPhone and iPad apps. Excellent. This is the control surface. Uh, we'll talk about it in a second. Uh, I'm going to plug in my MIDI controller here. And we're going to see down here in the MIDI ports. We're going to see it show up. Uh, usually you're going to see one input and one output. In this case, I have two inputs. Depends on your MIDI controller. Here we have three columns. Track is so you'll be able to play MIDI notes. Sync is so you can synchronize with other computers. And Remote is so you can use the MIDI mapping mode. Um, so let's uh, first of all load an instrument here. Make sure it's armed and can already play it uh, with my MIDI controller. If I want to map something, I'm going to go to MIDI mapping mode. Let's say I'm clicking on the track volume, moving one of the faders on my MIDI controller, and it's already mapped. Nice. Now, let's talk about the takeover mode. So, um, if it's set to none, when this cross fader is set to uh, something, somewhere, let's delete this too so you can see it. Let's say it's set here, um, or let's say it's set here. My fader is all the way down. As soon as I touch it, it's just jump to it. So that's takeover mode uh, turned off. When takeover mode is set to pick up, and let's say my cross fader is, is my track volume is here, my fader on my MIDI controller is here, uh, it's not going to do anything unless I pick it up where it is, okay, where the parameter is. So again, if I put it all the way down, my MIDI controller is here, I move in it, nothing happens unless I pick it up. Excellent. And my, I would say my most uh, used takeover mode, that's what I use, is the value scaling, which is going to proportionately control uh, the parameter that is mapped depends on where you are. So if this is all the way on the bottom, I'm right here. As soon as I touch it, it's already moving it, and it's going to proportionally scale it according to the position of your control. So again, right here, I'm in the middle, moving it up. It will move with me proportionally to where the control was. Excellent. Let's go back here. Nice. Now, the control surface, uh, you can select your controller if you see it from the list. For example, I'm using the Novation Impulse, so I'm going to select it right here. Uh, you should also select it from the inputs and output. Uh, some controllers will be automatically set up for you. And now what it is, it's instant mapping. Depend on how the manufacturer wrote the MIDI script, it's already controlling Ableton in a certain way. I'm going to go back to the MIDI mapping mode. Let's delete this. Exit MIDI mapping mode. And if I move one of my faders, the first one, it's already controlling it. I'm adding a new audio track, the second fader, already controlling the volume. Also, when you load any devices, instruments, and effects, you'll see the blue hand uh, on the device that is in focus, and you can already control it. It's already instant uh, mapped if you're using the control surface scripts. Okay? Nice. Um, I would say the most important thing to remember when you're just starting out, uh, the track would be on by default, but then when you try to MIDI map, um, maybe some things won't work, make sure the remote is on as well, unless you're using the control surface scripts, which is instant mapping. Now, if you open up the input, here you have some more uh, controls, some more options when you synchronize between two computers. Uh, or uh, uh, hardware gear and stuff like that. Now, we have Link, which is amazing, very easy to set up. If you need to synchronize with other hardware gears or other computers using MIDI, here you can set up a MIDI clock sync delay. Sometimes the drivers of hardware MIDI gear might be incorrect, so you can shift or offset the, the delay time. 
Uh, sync type, by default it's MIDI clock, sending MIDI clock or receiving MIDI clock for the input. You can also change that to MIDI time code and then you can change uh, the MIDI time code frame rate uh, and uh, start offset. That's if you're using time codes. Nice. Uh, and also for the output, you can send uh, the song position or only start uh, messages if your hardware gear or other computers doesn't receive the song position. Excellent. Uh, so that's the MIDI uh, link tab. Uh, check out next time. We're going to talk about the file folder tab.